Hi, this is a commentary on Seamus Heaney's poem for the AQA unit, Love Through the Ages, uh, for A-Level. And um, I think I want to go through three key images and um, three key emotions, uh, which is always a useful way of uh, concentrating your uh, focus on a poem for an exam or any particular piece of time writing you have to do. So the first three images I want to talk about are, um, the very first one is in the opening stanza where he says, I can feel the tug of the halter at the nape of her neck, the wind on her naked front. It's that image of the tug of the halter um, and it's it's where it is. It's, he can feel the tug but it's on the nape of uh, the neck, in other words at the back. So what you, you've been asked to imagine is that he's he is feeling what the female victim is feeling, which is the noose around her neck, and she's being pulled forwards towards something against her will. So that's where the pressure is. It's at the back, the nape of her neck, very specific. Um, what's extraordinary about that image is not just that you've got a female victim who's being pulled forward to something uh, fairly dramatic and violent, it's the empathy. Straight away, you're plunged into this very deep, um, idea that the poet himself is feeling what she's feeling. There's no introduction, there's no framing, there's no distance. Straight away the claim is he's feeling exactly what she's feeling and it's physical. It's, it's a sensation. It's not a word, it's not a thought, it's a physical sensation and it's two sensations in that opening stanza. The tug at the nape of the neck and then that cold feeling, the wind on her naked front. It's dramatic, it's, um, it's an amazing way of opening a poem because you think, why is she naked? What's going on? Why has she got this rope round her neck? Very quickly it builds up, of course, and you realise that what's happening is some form of ritualised violence. Now the poem itself is, as I'm sure you already know, it's based around the idea of a bog body dug, dug up from, I think, uh, a place in Germany, preserved in the peat bogs. And Heaney is using that archaeological discovery of that body to talk not about the past but about the present and we'll come to that in a minute. But just notice that the first key image is the opening stanza really used to develop um, a poetry of sensations of feelings, not just of thoughts but of feelings to make it very intense and to get across that level of empathy. The second image I want to point out um, is the one of the shaved head like a stubble of black corn and it's really a kind of scorched earth image. It's an image of devastation, of humiliation. And I think this is really typical of um, the kind of thing that Heaney does really well in a lot of his poetry, where the link between the person, a character, or the voice, and landscape is really, really intimate. So you can see it there in that image. Her, the way in which her head's been shaved, presumably as part of the kind of ritual of her execution, has made her resemble um, a kind of agricultural field that's been um, turned into a stubble. Now I know farmers do this for some kind of reason, you might want to check out why, but one of the images it might bring up as well is almost like um, military kind of when they scorch earth policy, when they go through an area and they wipe out all the crops. There is an image there of, of, of um, complete waste and devastation. The third image um, that I want to just pull up, and I'm scrolling down on my screen where I can see the poem, is that one in the final third of the poem, I almost love you, but would have cast, I know, the stones of silence. Now that is a, a biblical illusion, that he who is without sin cast the first stone, Jesus famously says in one of the uh, Gospels of the New Testament. Now Heaney, as a uh, Catholic, brought up with the Bible, as part of his regular kind of reading diet and he would know very um, personally and deeply that whole point that um, you shouldn't be casting stones because actually you know you're not without sin so he's saying to himself look I'm guilty I would have I would have cast stones um, stones of silence that's a really interesting image um, what I think he's getting at is the idea that there's guilt there, there's a sin there, and it's the sin of inaction. It's the sin of being a bystander and not standing up and fighting for the persecuted or for the oppressed. 
So he's feeling guilt. He's feeling the guilt of standing by and letting this thing happen, this horror, this violence happen without intervening in any way. Now, that's the heart of the poem. Um, the fact that he would have been a bystander who did nothing um, at a moment of horror because he's talking about the troubles in Northern Ireland in the 1960s through to the early 70s. And this is from a collection called North, where the first half of the collection is looking very much back in time, second half is a little bit more kind of up to date. But what unifies the whole collection of poems is that concern for how do you write about terrorist violence on the streets of your hometown, Belfast in Heaney's case. Um, you know, does, does, does a poet have any role in commentating on political violence? He struggled with it. Um, he didn't particularly want to be defined as a, as, a, as a Northern Irish poet who just talked about the current horror and troubles in Northern Ireland at the time, but he's linking the past and the present uh, in order to do that, in order to find a way of dealing with his feelings, his emotions. In this case, his feelings that he doesn't feel he can intervene He's a little bit like a bystander at an ancient execution who feels they can't raise their voice, who can't get involved. That's how a poet feels or a writer feels in the late 60s in Northern Ireland when the men of violence are increasingly um, ruling the streets. And for Heaney as a Catholic, whose sympathies are maybe more on the um, Irish nationalist side, he would see the violence as being kind of something that's perpetrated by both sides, not just by the terrorists, but by the British Army, um, which is a particularly difficult um, idea for, for maybe a lot of um, English readers, British readers to kind of come across. The emotions in the poem, um, I think there are three main emotions. The first one is that sense of paralysis. There's two interesting words in, in there that you can point to. He mentions silence and he mentions dumbness. And what those two emotions, those two sort of sensations both have is that um, sense of, of inaction, the idea that you, you can't say anything and you can't speak. Um, and that is the poet's condition, the writer's condition at a time of uh, terrorist violence. How, you know, what right have you got to, to, to write poetry at a time when people are dying on the streets, almost outside your front door? The second feeling, clearly guilt. And there's guilt about various things. One of the most interesting ones is voyeurism. That idea that you feel slightly awkward about looking at a dead body, even one that's been preserved, almost mummified, if you like, in um, the peat bog, he's still conscious of the fact that looking closely at um, a body from several centuries ago still feels wrong. It still feels a bit weird and creepy. So, voyeurism is that um, is that word that we'd use for kind of like a peeping tom, somebody who's looking at something they shouldn't be doing. He feels very awkward about that in terms of his own reaction to the German um, body from the bog. It's like a graveside desecration. The last feeling, or the last emotion that I want to talk about is towards the end. Beautiful, beautiful phrase. It's an oxymoron. Two words which pull apart in completely different directions. They're very contradictory. Civilised outrage. From the very last stanza, civilised outrage. It's worth just going through the last, um, the last two stanzas again. I who have stood dumb when your betraying sisters, called in tar, wept by the railings, who would connive in civilised outrage, yet understand the exact and tribal intimate revenge. Beautiful, beautiful rhythm to the lines, as always in Heaney. But just look at that vocabulary. He's saying, I would connive in civilised outrage. In other words, I'd be the first person to um, say, oh, it's terrible that um, modern day women on the streets of Northern Ireland are covered in tar, called in tar as he called it, kind of uh, punishment that um, the IRA, the paramilitaries would do to any girls and young women who were um, thought to have developed any relationships with British soldiers. They would have um, you know, given them this really public and very unpleasant humiliation of uh, being covered in tar and um, you know, kind of humiliated in public and quite painful, but also emotionally awful. He would say, yeah, I, I, I would claim to feel outrage about that. Connive, connive. Um, connive is something kind of um, furtive, creepy. It's not sincere. So he's saying, yeah, I, I, I would get involved in that. I would say it's wrong, but the last bit, 
Yet I understand the exact and tribal intimate revenge. Heaney's saying something that a lot of people wouldn't want to say, but he's saying, look, I get it. Um, even though um, what's happening to these women is outrageous, uh, civilized outrage, um, he feels that. He's saying he understands what's going on. And he's linking it to that centuries old past punishment of the adulteress in the German bog. And he's saying, look, communities will take out a form of revenge. If you break the rules, if you break the standards of your community, violence will happen. And he doesn't say he approves of it. He doesn't say he consents to it. The word, the verb that he uses is understand. And it leaves the reader with a bit of a question mark, I think, at the end. Um, where is Heaney in all this? Where is his morality? Is he standing up for the underdog? Is he standing up for the young women who have been treated in this way? Or is he almost saying, well, you know, um, they've had it coming. It's a really troubling ending. It's meant to be. Um, because he's talking about the difficult feelings that you have as a citizen in Northern Ireland particularly perhaps as a citizen who is a Catholic at a time of violence in the streets of Belfast when the situation seems to be spiralling out of control. Um, there are a lot of contradictory and strange uh, things going on on the streets and there are inside Heaney's head. So a very typical thing a teacher will tell you to do is to look for inner conflict as well as talking about the outer conflict. So um, this is a very personal poem. It's a very um, kind of... Uh, moody and uh, dark poem and I think it's Heaney looking into his own soul really and saying there are three things going on paralysis that sense of guilt and that sense that he feels a kind of outrage yet he knows that something of that is a little bit conventional and maybe even a little bit fake <laughs>